So welcome everyone to the Building Bellingham Pivot Series. Um, happy Thursday, or as we also like to call it, Friday Junior. Um, <laughs> not quite there, <laughs> not quite there, but we're almost there. Um, I've got two awesome local guests here. Um, in the upper left corner, uh, I've got Hayden Lamaster with Lamaster Graphics and Design. Thank you for joining us today. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a quick elevator pitch out here. Um, so I'm Hayden with Lamaster Graphics. Uh, I do uh, the three sort of umbrellas that I cover are web branding and marketing materials. So if you need a website or if your logo hasn't been refreshed since the 90s or you need new business cards or custom stickers, uh, anything under those three umbrellas, I probably offer. So uh, that's a little bit about me and kind of what I do. Awesome. Are you, are you locally? Are you from Bellingham or are you, you know, moved to Bellingham? Where are you from? I'm that story that you hear all the time in Bellingham. I moved here for college and uh, it was hard to leave, so I stuck around. Yeah, you got I'm from the Tacoma ground, area uh, originally. I yeah. uh, grew up in Sumner, Washington, came up here to go to school for four years, and that was about 10 years ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, fell in love with the area, started a business here, and thought, you know, it's a good place to live. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm that same guy. And uh, Radley Mueller, a uh, friend of mine, uh, someone I work with a lot here. Um, Thank you for joining us today. Tell us a little bit more about who you do. Besides being the guy behind the camera or the drone, what, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> well, Bradley Miller Photography is a full service studio here in Bellingham. Been doing this for 31 years, it'll be 32 years in August as a professional photographer. And we have a full service studio, everything from maternity, baby pictures, family pictures, weddings, a lot of real estate, a lot of commercial work, product shots, things like that. So I just love, do, love doing what I get to do. Yeah. And, and, and so, for those of you out there that are looking for somebody or some bodies, two people that can help, you know, you guys do a lot of what's called like supporting other businesses. Your, your, your businesses are about uh, elevating the branding or elevating the um, perception of a brand um, in many different ways, whether it's visually from a you know, real life photography or it's in upping the brand content or creating, uh, you know, anything to get your reach out there a little bit more. So, um, so thank you for doing that because you do that for a lot of people. Both of you do. Yeah, we, love, so, we love what we get to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we so to, we had a good team. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about. I mean, just really briefly because I don't want to beat a dead horse here. We all know right now that we're coming into well, phase two. We're growing into phase two, right? We're we're in this new world where we can actually just live a little bit more and operate our businesses a little bit more freely. Um, tell me a little bit more about your experiences over the last couple months um, going from probably pretty booming coming off of a big year in 2019, like, like we were to, Hey, I don't think you can work anymore. Um, <laughs> tell me a little bit more about that experience. Uh, hey, maybe if you want to start off and Bradley, you can uh, fill in after that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll kick it off. So it's been a little weird. I mean, I, I work out of a home office anyway, so there's no like giant change for, Oh, I can't go to the office anymore. Um, but at the same time, you know, being a kind of a solopreneur, as they call it, I'm a one man business. And Radley, I'm, I'm sure I'm speaking on your behalf as well. So much business comes from handshaking, from going to those lunches and being known and sitting at tables with people, giving your elevator pitch. Uh, a lot of word of mouth and in-person networking that's just sort of hasn't existed since March. Um, so I've had to get a little creative with outreach. I've been sending a lot of emails, drawing up a lot of samples saying, hey, a lot of businesses right now are really holding onto their wallets and not wanting to spend a lot of money. Um, so it's on us now to find new clients and bring in new business uh, for the time being until things do get back to normal. Right, yeah, absolutely. So you're, you're, you're in a situation where so, so much of how you grow your business is by meeting people in person and, and you know, going to these networking events. And, um, but how you operate your business is you're actually able to, to operate pretty smoothly with your current client clientele, right? So it's pretty easy for you to continue working with that that kind of demographic, but like, as far as meeting new people was like, that definitely made it more difficult, right? Exactly, yeah, I mean, I have some clients who, you know, live out of state, and we don't even think about it because everything's just done via email. I have one client based in Los Angeles who I'm doing more work with right now than ever, um, and that's been fine, but exactly, yeah, for bringing in new business, I can't just go grab a cup of coffee with someone. Yeah, unless it's six feet away, so, yeah, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Radley, so much of, I mean, granted, there's, there's real estate photography, there's, there's some, uh, I guess, categories of what you do that don't necessarily need to involve people, but the majority of what you do does involve people, right? I mean, yeah. what, what, I mean, what percentage, do you think 90% of what you do is people? 
90 to 95 easy. So you can't be around people. You know, this is, I mean, granted, I'm sorry, a month ago or so, you couldn't be around people. So what was that like for you going from 95% of your business coming from being around people to saying, well, you're not essential um, in these ways. Yeah, it's been hard. We've, I mean, all of the sports we photograph for the boys and girls clubs, the YMCA's and for Western, everything is shut down indefinitely right now. All of our events currently booked through December 31st have all canceled. Yep. It's just crazy that it's, we're having to roll with it and adapt and we're doing a lot of, we're working on product photography, um, commercial shoots when businesses are closed, we can go in there and photograph their businesses for them when no one's around. Um, we even started doing portraits. As soon as we were able to, we were doing distancing portraits where we were shooting with a long lens, being away from them and great to see you. Have a great day. I'll send you, send you your proof tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, give them a so little. Yeah. We, have to, we, have, we had to adapt in order to survive and we're working on that and we're doing product photography, real estate photography, and commercial work is our mainstay right now. With some portraits coming back in, some portraits rolling back in, senior portraits at a distance. So it's, we're being safe about it, but we've got to do something to, and to survive. So let's talk about that moment. Like, let's, you guys both mentioned something that was along the same lines, like, Hayden, you, you had to get creative on how you met people, right? And how you attracted new business. And, and Radley, you had to figure out the best way for you to continue operating in the 95% world that it's so important to your business. Let's, let's talk about adaptability. Like as a business owner, you've probably, both of you have probably been through, you know, good times and bad times, or, you know, usually when you start out a business, it sucks and you're grinding it out and it's like, <laughs> you know, make the best of it, you know, but let's, how important is adaptability and, and, the, and the quickness of adaptability? I mean, I granted you're taking enough time to really think about it, but also like being able to make decisions to, adjust your business how important is that you adapt or you die in this business yeah. and like we have started doing virtual tours of, of homes we're doing woody video walkthroughs and 360 tours of homes so people can visit these homes and still keep realtors in business by not even having to go there yeah so it's and then having to do product photography where they, they'll drop off stuff drop off the products to us and we have to photograph them and arrange for them to pick them up so it's you gotta you adapt or die yeah. And I got bills to pay. Absolutely. Yeah. And the truth is too, I mean, th this whole thing of having to adapt, it's, it's not anything new. It's just faster in this case. I mean, if you look at a business over the course of 10 years, you know, there's a lot of adaptation that happens in that 10 years because there's been 10 years of change in the marketplace. Uh, we're just seeing that same thing now over like the course of a couple of months. Um, but I think it's the same concept of the marketplace does change. You have to adapt only here. It's like, Oh, every day it's, there's major changes going on. And that adaptation that we should all be doing anyway is just happening on a much faster scale. So yeah. let me ask you this. As entrepreneurs, I mean, a lot of people look at change happening quick. A lot of people don't like change. You know, change, we like our comfort zone. Most, anybody likes their comfort zone. Some of us are a little bit more like change junkies, as I call us. We kind of we need a little bit of, uh, you know, these moments that put us on the spot to, to grow. But tell me a little bit more about, um, those moments as entrepreneurs, um, you, like a lot of people maybe, maybe look at you know, these rapidly increasing changes as a moment to be afraid. How do you lean into those as, as business owners? How do you, is it experience? Is it like, oh, I've, I've seen stuff like this happen, just not on the scale. Like it's time to lean in, buck up and go for it. Or what, what do you do as a business owner? Well, sometimes you have to take the leap and grow your wings on the way down. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, you got to do it. Even if you're scared of doing it, you know you have to do it. You take you take that leap and you figure it out. Sometimes you don't have time to figure it out completely, but you have to learn to learn to adapt and learn new skills and or relearn the skills that you've had that you've had to, haven't had to rely on for a while. Yeah. So it's you take take that leap and you grow your wings on the way down. Yeah. Then you start to fly again. It, it, and now is that a and hey maybe you can jump into this. Is this is this something that you're is this like an innate like. I was born this way. It's, it's a nature <laughs> thing where I, like you just, from an early age, you were, you guys were able to like kind of lean into these challenges and just kind of go for it. Or is this something that you learn or is it a combination of, of both? I mean, what do you, what do you think on that? I would for say me, a little of both. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, I would say a little of both personally. I've kind of always had that mindset of, you know, kind of thinking outside the box and whatnot, which sort of led me to this creative field. Uh, but at the same time, like Radley said, it's adapt or die. 
Um, you know, Radley, if during this whole crisis you were just going, hey, I do personal portraits, I'm just going to sit at home eight hours a day and do nothing. Well, what does that do for you? Uh, you know, it, I think it's easy to go, oh, I can't do this. Let's just let's just sit and wait. And instead, I think a lot of successful businesses are going, okay, what else can I be doing? What can I be offering? Uh, the example of going into businesses while they're empty is great. You know, if you're a popular bar that's always crowded, you just realistically probably can't get empty photos of your bar during business hours. Now you can. Uh, now is a great time to sort of make hay while the sun shines and take advantage of those unique situations that come up uh, instead of focusing on the negative and saying, oh, I can't do this. Better just wait it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Radley, what about you on that? I mean, I know, I've known you for a little while now and I mean, we, we, we very much see eye to eye on like how we operate. We just like, you, you can't get stuck in the weeds of why something happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about I've been, your... I've, been, I've been stuck in those weeds before and I've been stuck here the last couple of months, but I've had to figure it out with the people around me supporting me and help pull me up, pull me up out of my own bootstraps. I mean, it was hard, but I've been through this before where I've started from the ground up and that's basically what we're doing is we're starting from the ground up yeah. and it's, it's been eye opening yeah. realizing that we can do a lot more. It's just how we choose to do it. Yeah. Well, and, and both of you run big businesses, but you run your businesses kind of differently. Like Hayden, Hayden, you're, you're a solo operator and, and Radley, you've got a team. Obviously the team is kind of centered around uh, you, you leading the charge, but then there's people that are doing really important things that you may not be good at or they're better at. Tell me a little bit more about like, how, how do you do that as a business owner? What, how important is, is leverage? And, and Hayden, how do you, for those people that are out there that are, that don't have a big team around them, that's, there's, there's no one right way of doing it. It just depends on what your goals are. Tell me how, how do you operate? How does that, uh, yeah, tell me how that works. Well, um, I've always, yeah, go ahead. Now go ahead, you turn. Um, yeah, so I don't have a team here per se, but I do use a lot of vendors and whatnot. Uh, and I think it's just making sure everyone's on the same page. You know, we're all struggling right now. There's complications for every business. And I think just communication is a huge part of that. In, in meeting deadlines, in, you know, making these things happen, um, you know, we're all, we're all struggling right now. We're all sort of trying to get through this together. And I think just communication and teamwork is bigger now than ever. Yeah. And how do you find vendors? I mean, for someone that's starting out, that's not even in a position where, they have a network of vendors. How do you find vendors that you can truly trust? Is there something that, is there a process you put them through or in your head or, I mean, how do you, how do you gauge trust? It's such a weird thing to gauge, right? It's tricky. Yeah. Especially being kind of a younger business. I'm trying to do that myself. You know, I'm, I'm a guy in my twenties and a lot of people are like, Oh, you don't have that much experience. So it's a hill that I kind of have to climb as well in that regard. Um, one thing that's helped a lot is chamber of commerce events and stuff like that. Uh, where you can see someone kind of in their business element uh, surrounded by other businesses where, you know, they're giving their pitch and you, you sort of know you've got to be good at what you do to play in this field. Um, you know, someone's a horrible vendor. They're not going to be part of the chamber. They're not going to be trusted at these events for that long. And I think there's a natural trust that comes around those community networking events. Yeah. You don't stand up in your one minute pitch and say, uh, before I get started, I want everyone to know I'm a horrible vendor. Uh, <laughs> But yeah. well, you should trust me anyway. Yeah, but you should trust me exactly. anyway. Exactly. I don't trust myself, but you should trust me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, what about you? How do you, um, how does your business operate? Well, I've, I found I, I tend to hire people that are better than me in things that I'm not good at. Yeah. So it's like, Nick is a very valuable person because he is more technical savvy than me. He's up on the new trends in tech. And Kimberly's a good marketer and good graphic design artist and a good photographer. They're both great photographers. And it, we, we balance each other out. And it's a really kind of copacetic relationship there with all with everybody here in the team. Because we all do things together, but we all know how to do our own specialties. Yeah. Well, well, for, for, finding, for, for finding vendors, I, I tend to, see, to trust people and trust their word. So if I'm asking, hey, Leo, you know, these graphic people you were using, they do some really good work. If I come to you as a trusted person, as a friend, I would trust your referral. And that's how I build my, my team. Yeah. For vendors and suppliers and people. Yeah. You have to, you have to start with someone that you trust that you know, that would, that really values that whoever they refer to you is going to be like, that's their word, right? To you. Right. Um, and you talked about taking a step back and thinking about what you're really good at, what you're not good at. Mm -hmm. um, and there, or, or like what you'd like to do, cause that that's really important. So it doesn't feel like work, you know? Yeah. And 
tell me a little bit more about that process of like self honesty. Like how important is being honest with yourself about what you're good, good at and not good at. Very. Uh, it's, it's a lot. I mean, like I can photograph children and babies, but I'm not the best at it. And if someone really wants something different or unique or special, I have no problem referring to someone else and see that's better at it than me. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a hard one for me is that I can do it. It's not my favorite. I'm not, I don't have all the, the specialties for the newborn babies and, the, and things like that. So I will, I will definitely refer them to people that are better at it than me. Yeah. So I, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, Hayden, what about you? How, how do you, especially like uh, in, a, in a moment where you're, you're very reliant on, on vendors because it's just you, how do you, what are those moments like when you're like, ooh, this is not something that I like to do. This is not something I think I'm that good at. Here's who you should talk to. Like, tell me about that process for you. I, I, in that regard, I kind of think what goes around comes around. Um, you know, I, I don't want to take on a project that I'm not that good at and give my client like a halfway decent project when I know someone else can do it better. Um, but that works backwards as well. You know, there are folks out there who are gonna say, hey, I can't do this that well, but Hayden does it. Um, and I think instead of, cause the, the worst thing that can happen is let's say someone, I do a lot of website design, for example. I, I build websites from the ground up, host them, maintain them, stuff like that. Um, and if someone comes to me with something that I'm not that good at, and then next month they need a website done, which is a major project that I can do well, I'd hate to give them a halfway built, you know, not very good small project and have them go, oh, I don't trust Hayden for that web design now. Yeah. I'd rather throw that project off to someone else who can knock it out of the park, um, give that, let them get a, a nice finished product, and then it builds some trust in me as well. So when it is time to have a website done or some custom stickers or something that I do well, they can come to me as a trustworthy source. And it works the other way too, that person who can knock that project out of the park might not be great at web design and they might go, oh, well, I can't do that, but Hayden can too. At the end of the day, the customer gets some great finished products and we all get business out of it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then they, and they trust both of you at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it, for me, it's like having somebody say, Hey, what, they, maybe they asked me a question that I would just go ask Bradley um, about photography. And I said, and, and actually I've found in my lifetime having somebody refer me to an expert, instead of relaying information, makes me trust them even more. You know, exactly, like, I really don't yeah. know that's a great question. You should talk to this person, you know? So, so t okay, so tell me a little bit, if you were like your perfect day in photography and your perfect day in design, what are the things about your, about your career and your job um, and what you do in your business that you love the most? Uh, if you were to choose one of the facets of your business. Well, for me, if I could have a favorite day in photography, it would be, I get to go photograph weddings. Yeah, because I get to pl I get to take my bag of toys and get to go play with people that want to be there. They're there for a good reason. They're there to have fun and enjoy the day. And yeah. I get to, I get to be a part of that day. And those people become friends for life for me because I'm part of the family now. Yeah, you forgot about the booze part. <laughs> <laughs> at the end, at the end. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, uh, Hayden, what about you? Um, yeah, what I love about my job, and this is the best kind of email I can get, is when someone says, "Hey, I've got a project." and just sort of roll with it, you know, be creative, have fun. A big part of why I got into this industry um, isn't just the business side, but the creative side as well. And I love when someone goes, hey, I want a website done. And they, there's always some sort of general framework they wanna see uh, and the general outline of their goals and whatnot. But I love when someone goes, here's my goal, here's my framework, and then outside of that, just be creative. And I get to mock up five or six different ideas and really have fun with it and kind of think outside the box um, I love stuff like that. And there's not, there's nothing wrong with a client who goes, Hey, I want it exactly this way. Those projects are enjoyable too. Um, but sometimes you get one where someone's like, we're just going to kind of go off the board here and see what we can do and kind of get to flex that creative muscle a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're we get that from, from our clients that when we, we ask them, what would they like to see? Which, what kind of views would they like? And it's the best thing is, is we hired you for a reason. We trust you. Just go do it. Yep. And that's the best compliment you can get is they trust you to take care of them. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. And for, for you both, again, we come back to this conversation about brand. I mean, so much of, especially in, in, for what we do, having professionals like you both to elevate our brand um, as real estate professionals is, is so important. When, when you decided to maybe, maybe, maybe it shows you, I don't know, but when you, when you, made the decision to pursue both your businesses. 
how important was brand to you and how important is brand in today's day and age for your clients, for you guys, uh, for how people perceive you and your clients? Oh, it's so important. Good. Go ahead. I, I think brand is bigger than ever right now. Um, just because, I mean, no matter what day and age we're in with advertising, what kind of tech is out there, whether it's social media or TV or radio, uh, word of mouth is always, always king. Um, and there's nothing better than someone you trust giving you that impression, like we were saying with referrals and whatnot, someone you trust giving you that good word of mouth. And I think brand, it works on two levels. There's a business level and a personal level. Some folks know me as LaMaster Graphics. Some folks know me as Hayden. Either way, that's my brand. Uh, whether they're meeting me at a chamber event or whether I bump into them at a bar downtown, uh, that's my brand. And, you know, if I'm wearing this LeMaster shirt and getting in a bar fight, my brand suddenly doesn't look that good. And it's one of those things where I think in this day and age, we're always on. And you've always kind of got to be in that mindset of this is reflecting on you no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Right. I mean, your, your brand would look great if you were in uh, in uh, Fight Club, you know? Yeah. That's why I think would say your brain is awesome. He'd probably hire you for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Radley, what about you? I think brand is very important these days. Um, case in point, we were down on the coast a couple of years ago and my, my rig was parked out in front of this restaurant we were at and we we're sitting on the patio and this couple behind us was talking about, hey, I know that, that, that logo there. This is the guy that photographed our, our fire department pictures in Bellingham. Yeah. And, oh, I wow. tapped him up, and I tapped him on the shoulder and says, you're right, I did your pictures a couple months ago. And I'm like, oh, hey, Radley, how's it going? And it's like, and you get recognized by the logo and then they recognize you and it's just, it's an all encompassing branding. It's like, and we're all, wherever we go, we're all, we're all branded up. Everything from our cars to our jackets to our pens to our money clip or our little clip, clips we hand out. Um, everything we do is branded. So it's name recognition, it's brand recognition. And it's like, it's a trust. It's like we, we grow up with these people. We grow up with their kids and they're trusting us. And they just recognize, hey, that's Radley. It's like, and even though, you're, Radley, what you're talking about also is not, it's not just like, because anybody can, like this little swoosh on my shirt could easily just be a swoosh on my shirt, right? But it means a lot more to, more to those that buy it, and your your logos all mean more. We, and we would talk a little bit more about like mission, vision, and values, and like the soul of your business. Like, I, I've seen people make really nice logos, and like I'm sure Hayden, I'm sure you've mocked up some really awesome logo for somebody, but they have no mission, vision, values. They have like maybe the the soul behind their business is not there. Tell me about the soul of your business, how you treat people. Why, why it's so important behind that brand. Yeah, um, so I, I think that's a really good point. Uh, whenever I talk to a customer who I'm doing a logo for, for example, the conversation goes so far beyond just let's make this look pretty. Uh, you know, a logo should look nice, but it shouldn't just be, oh, I like this color, I like this font. That's the whole conversation. Uh, there's meaning, there's goals, there's what does the brand represent? And you're exactly right on that. You know, I always sit down, with someone I'm doing a logo for and ask, okay, what's the history? What's your story? What do you offer? What are your unique values in the business? And the challenge is boiling that all down to an image, to a very simple image. Um, but I think any logo that you see, even like a simple Nike swoosh represents so much more than just, oh, that looks nice. Um, and I think we, you know, we should all kind of keep that in our own mind as well of, I have this logo, I have this image, what's the message behind it? What sort of personal service or personal values or unique values do you bring to the table that are somehow boiled down into that image that's on your pen or your clip or whatever else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Radley, what about you? Um, you kind of summed it up there. It's just, it's just a, um, you, when you have a brand and our team is a brand and our company is a brand and we stand behind everything we do and people know that, that we don't just put stuff out there, but we stand behind everything. And they know when they see that, if we're photographing their, their children at the YMCA or boys and girls clubs, they know that we take care of their kids and they trust us with them. And that's it's the brand behind it. No matter who's behind, the, who's behind the camera or who's there, our brand is standing behind them trusting us to do what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I'll, I'll never forget when we first met at, uh, at Overflow. Actually, we re-met because you had photographed some, some Western stuff when I, played, when I was playing at Western. But um, at, at, at uh, Overflow Taps, we sat down, it was me and Brittick, and and I think you said, hey, man, I know you're just getting started and it probably seems expensive and I'm really willing to work with you because I want to help you elevate your, your business. And I'll never forget that. And, you know, we, we started with a few and then all of a sudden it's just like, hey, Radley, hey, hey, Radley, hey, Radley. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, 
it's something like that that I know that like I, that I could trust, you know. And so, yeah. So when, when I think a lot about that, that the heart and soul of a business, you know, Hayden, you said it exactly right. It's just like it, it doesn't mean anything without like a track record behind it of like just showing up for people and and and, and being good to people, right? Yeah. For for you guys, let's talk. Let's kind of pivot a little bit outside of just business. What what are like you guys work a lot. I know, and then maybe that's just, we won't have to dive too much into that. For, I know you guys are like smiling, like a lot, sure, yeah, that's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you uh, could say that, yeah. <laughs> what's, what are your constants? What are some things that for both of you that maybe on a long day you can go back to and just like unwind, recharge, and it gets you ready to go back as entrepreneurs for the next day? What's, what's your constant, your energy reboost? Hmm. Wow. Um, well, we work hard so we can play harder. I know that we put in, we put our all in so we can take time off and go play a couple yeah. times, a couple times a year. We take off two or three weeks and just go and yeah. get out. And that's my recharge is looking forward to getting out. Like we're, we get a house on the beach and just go hang out there for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, we go on, a, go on a cruise and just hang out. And our, our, our push every day is to know that we get that we get the opportunity to go and relax and just enjoy life for a couple of weeks at a time. Yeah. So, yeah, but we put we put long hours in, knowing that the next day is the next day, and we just start over again. Yeah. Oh, maybe dive into that. What does what does that mean to have every day reset? Because some people get hung up and carry the previous day to the next day. How do you reset every day? How does that happen? Um, like for me, I have to have all of my jobs photographed today. I've got to have them all delivered tomorrow morning before I leave the home to go out and start 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 my next day. I want to start each day fresh. Yeah. I don't want to have carry, carry quote unquote baggage into the next day of stuff I didn't get done yesterday or a couple days before. It's like I work and the team works and we get it done. So the next day it's fresh. So it doesn't, doesn't pile up on us. Yeah. Yeah. Hayden, Hayden what about you being, being the, the, the sole entrepreneur with, with vendors, but not really a team necessarily immediately around you? What, how do you, how do you unplug? How do you recharge? How do you, what's your constant? Yeah, it's a little trickier in my case just because it is so easy to, you know, at 6 p.m. after dinner, it's so easy to take the phone out and check your email. And I, I, I've got to be better about, you know, not doing that and being able to unplug. I, I like that mindset, Radley, of kind of wrapping up your task for one day and starting the next one fresh. Um, and I've tried to be better about that too, kind of keep business within business hours. But, you know, once I'm off the clock, I do a lot of uh, woodworking, a lot of DIY in the garage, stuff like that. Uh, if I'm going to a wedding, for example, you better expect they're going to get some sort of handmade gift. Um, it's a good way to flex that creative muscle without being at work. Uh, I can still be creative and have that outlet without, you know, answering client phone calls, meeting deadlines, all kind of the stressors that come along with work work. I can just sort of, you know, go in the garage, find some plans online for something cool I haven't built before. And uh, like I said, still exercise that creativity, but outside of the office. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. What about the conversation about value? I, I know that like it, when you're starting out a new business or you've been in business a long time, it's, it's so hard gauging like, what do I charge? How do I like, do, you're working with everybody because you don't really know yet or whatever it may be. What, tell me more about value and how, you, how do you put, a, put your finger on value? How do you start like choosing clients and why is it important to have a two-way street, like a mutual relationship? Tell, tell me a little bit more about that experience and how you put a put a value on your service. Um, well, I, I value is very it's perceived by the client what they are what they will want to pay for that service. Let's just let's take real estate for a set for an example. Some people and I've met realtors that will take pictures with their iPhone, and I asked them why. And he says, "Well, it's good enough for me." And I asked him, well, is it good enough for your clients though? And they said, well, it's too expensive. And I says, but you're selling a million and a half dollar house. You'd think you would want to value your clients a little more than that and, and show off what, they've, what they're trying to sell and portray as their home. They just, they just don't value that until we explain to them and show them what we do and why we do it and how it affects them. And they, instead of taking their own pictures, they can go out and work with other clients, drum up more business, more real estate, go network with somebody else. Instead of taking time out of their day to do something that they may not be the best at, but they don't want to pay for services of someone that does it better. It's a bigger picture mindset, right? It's, it's saying, again, it's like, 
to your, you have to kind of educate your clients who may be realtors, just getting married, have a baby, sports teams, whatever it may be, uh, what their time is worth, right? Mm -hmm. You could either do something, not, of course, you don't want to say you're going to do it really poorly, but like you could either do this like pretty mediocre and you could take time away from what you should be doing, which is doing your job, which is not being a photographer, right? right. Or you could hire someone to just take that off your plate, get things streamlined, make sure you have more time to handle the things that you should be handling, right? That yep. you're good at. So you can take care of the clients the way you take care of them and we can take care of our clients the way we, the way we take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hayden, what about you gauging like, you've got a client coming in, how do you decide like how much you charge? Do you have a menu? Is, is it like you, just putting a finger on what, well, what your time is worth, right? A, yeah, uh, the analogy I use a lot because some people they ask, they go, okay, how much does a logo cost or how much does a website cost? And I, I say, you know, that's, that's a lot like asking how much does a car cost? Um, there, there's going to be follow-up questions. You can't tell me right now how much a car costs because you don't know, do I want new or used? Do I want a Honda or a Cadillac? Um, there's so many questions after that initial one. Um, so just like if someone goes, okay, what does the logo cost? It's like, okay, well, you know, how many rounds of revisions do you want? How many file packages do you need? Uh, where is this going to be used? Are you going to put it in one, on one business card or is it going on golf balls and embroidered shirts and stuff like that? Uh, what industry are you in? What dollar value clients are you targeting? Uh, there's so many questions that then leads to what it boils down to is how much work do I need to put in to make this logo happen? Yeah. Uh, and then that's kind of where the price comes from. And then also the value that comes out of that logo or that website or whatever else. Um, with physical products, stuff like stickers and business cards, it's a little easier because that's just a cost. It's, I can tell you how much that costs right now. Um, but for a website, it's like, okay, am I going to be putting 10 hours into this project or 100? Um, some clients, a 10 hour website is plenty. Some clients need that hundred hour website. It really depends on what their goals are. Uh, and then coming back to value, uh, it boils down to the brand. Uh, you can have, like, like Bradley said, you can go out and take photos with your iPhone. Uh, but then people will see those iPhone photos and associate that with your brand, which may not be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're talking about expectations. How important are expectations for, for you? Um, and how have those changed since you've like expectation setting at least since you started in the business versus now having gone through the gauntlet of every single type of possible scenario? How do you set expectations? What, and how important are those to you and the client? Yeah, um, for any sort of visual field, you know, design and photography alike, uh, so much of it's your portfolio. Um, you know, if I'm just as much as if I'm hiring a photographer, I want to go online. I want to see their photos. I want to make sure they're not using an iPhone three to take senior photos. Um, and I think that sort of builds a reputation just as much as you can go online and see websites that I've built or logos I've designed. Uh, and you kind of know what you're getting into. You know, when I first started out, I worked cheap because I was a 20 year old kid in college with no portfolio. And, you know, I didn't just give my stuff away, but I was a lot cheaper because I couldn't really build that expectation up. I couldn't go, oh, here's five different websites I built. I, I said, hey, I just learned how to do this. Here's zero websites that I've built. Uh, and my price sort of had to reflect that. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm at a point where I've, I've built up enough of a background, enough of a brand, I can say, hey, here's a bigger price tag, uh, but I can also directly show you the work and the value you're gonna get out of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and just, just a quick disclaimer, believe it or not, if you go to Radley's website, it's, it's, their photos are not taken with an iPhone 3. They're used to <laughs> an actual camera. I'd be a little concerned if they were. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. So anyways, and, and Radley, for you, I know that like, obviously we've got a pretty smooth operation going at this point, but like when we first started working together or when you bring on a new client or when you bring on a new realtor or whatever, everyone, all of those would be your clients. How important are your expectations? And how do they set you up for success, you know, further down the road? Well, it's an education process with our clients as we, we talk to them and ask questions and ask leading questions about what they want, what they want to see, how they want it delivered. What, what price point are they, are they looking for? So nothing is set in stone, but we value what we do and we price accordingly. I mean, we don't give our work away because we work for a living. We have bills to pay just like everyone else. And we don't, but we don't undervalue ourselves either. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a process of building trust with these people and, and getting information from them and to them that they understand of why we do what we do. And this is why we charge what we charge. 
and then they sit back and go, oh, I didn't know that. You guys do all this stuff. Yes, yeah. we do. Like it's every so image that leaves our house, leaves the studio, is edited. Right. It's not just straight out of the camera. I don't, we don't just burn, burn a USB drive or a DVD and hand it over to them yeah. and charge a couple hundred bucks. It's, no, that, my name is reflected on every, every image that leaves the studio. Rather, if I take it or the team takes it, there's a standard that we put out and people expect that and we teach them about why we do what we do and how we do it. And they come to appreciate that. Yeah, you, you want a $50 charge? It's going to be on the iPhone 3. There you go. Perfect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, it, it, and so this is another direction that we can go with this because there's, there's are, there are a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners that do watch this. And so for those people, when they're trying to gauge, because there's two different directions you can go, especially when you're starting, there's kind of growing your market share, like growing, how do you, you know, gain more business, right? You know, gain the trust and, you know, get bigger accounts or whatever it may be. And then there's like, getting the true like one-to-one -one value of what your services are worth. How do you guys make decisions as you're growing and scaling to, well, maybe I'll adjust this for market share to grow. Um, or how do you, how do you do that? What's, what's that process like for you? It's an evolution. It's, there's no, there's no one set menu. It's, it's a constant evolution. It's like last year we just re we changed our direction of all of our real estate photography to provide our, our, our realtors and brokers what they wanted and how they wanted it. Granted, I had an idea of how I wanted to present it, but how everybody else saw it was, well, we'd like to see this instead. All right. So we, we changed things up and gave people what they wanted and kind of restructured everything. So it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship we have with our clients. If they want something, I'm not dead set against it. I'll look into it and see how we can do it so we can better um, have a better relationship that way. Yeah, absolutely. Hayden, how do you, what about you? How do you, how do you, uh, how do you gauge situations like as, and then there's, again, there's no menu, there's no one menu or blueprint, but like you as an entrepreneur go, well, here are the pros and cons. How do I weigh this out? This is for growth. This is for one-to-one, -one, you know, value, right? How do you do that? Yeah, I think there's, there's a good balance there. I think, you know, like, like I look at websites, for example, when I build a website, if someone goes out to get a $50 website, that's a bad idea for a few different reasons. At the same time, if a new startup, small business goes out and get a $50,000 website, that's also a bad idea for other reasons. You know, a company like Nike can spend 50 grand on a, a piece of web marketing because they've done all the research and whatnot. But a new small business, if, if you take on a giant expense like that, that's probably too much cash at once. You know, there's a middle ground somewhere where you want to spend the money, but you don't want to get in over your head. Um, and that's part of why I like to ask clients about their budget. I go, okay, what is your comfortable budget for this? What are you looking to spend? And how can I make the best use out of every dollar that you're putting down? Um, but at the same time, you know, if they, if they underpay, they're going to get someone who's not very good at what they do. If they overpay, that can cause problems as well. Uh, so I'm all about kind of just finding the right mix of services to meet that budget, whatever it may be. Yeah, absolutely. And you talked about yeah. budget a little bit. Tell me a little bit more about, and not necessarily like we, no one knew that COVID was going to happen. We kind of had it like, you know, on, on the outskirts, um, um yeah. definitely in our peripherals. But how do you both as business owners, because we're not all, you know, we're not, you know, CPAs, we're not, uh, we don't have financing backgrounds. Like I, I never finished college. So I'm kind of learning all these things as I go how, for somebody like you, um, both, how do you, how do you weatherproof your business? How do you think like, okay, things are good right now. Instead of buying a boat, I'm going to put money into this. <laughs> or I'm going to, you know what I, you know what I mean? How do you prepare for, um, the hard times in the good times how do you train your mind to not go out and you know creeping elegance grow your lifestyle right <laughs> well for us it's, it's diversification um a lot of people put all their all their eggs in one basket and i'm only going to do like for instance i'm only going to do um, portrait photography well not that's not a year-round business for a lot of people um we have a studio where we can do that year-round but we do we have very diverse offerings so we can we can work year-round and service a lot of different clients in a lot of different areas throughout the year so it's for us we have to diversify and we have three businesses we have our, our photography studio we also own homeport interiors and options cabinetry so we, we keep busy with those three businesses so diversifying your sources of income basically saying well if this one completely shuts down we still have four other legs we're good to go it covers our expenses so Diversifying is one way of doing that. And what about like treating 
the good times as if you're still in the bad times. So you know what I mean? How, how do you do that? He's frozen in an ice cube right now. <laughs> Bradley, you're back. And you know, I'm back. It was breaking up for a second. I don't know. Yeah, no worries. So, so talking about like during the good times when, when your, your business has more income than the bad times, right? How do you mm -hmm. maintain that mindset of, well, it, it's not always going to be like this. Not, not trying to be a pessimist, right? But like, how do, I, how do you maintain that mindset of like, well, tomorrow could be different. Tomorrow there could be another pandemic. Yeah, a few months ago when this all started, it's kind of hit home that I need to do that more. Yeah. I've not been, I've not been of that mindset for the most part because it's been a, we're growing our business and we're growing the photography business and there's always equipment to replace and there's always, there's always new, new stuff out there. The wife calls them toys, the accountant calls them tools. So it depends yeah. on which way we go. Yeah. But it's, there's always something new, but I've got to, had to teach myself that I don't need everything new. Yeah. We do with what we got and, and kind of sacks them away for what ifs. And yes. It's, it's hitting home the last couple months. I'm doing more of that. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And what about you? Um, a big part of it, I think, has been just, you know, setting, setting myself up for recurring business. Uh, when I first learned how to build websites, I saw a demand in the marketplace for web design, uh, taught myself how to build a website. And the first couple that I did for clients, it was, okay, give me your login info for, you know, go out and get a hosting account because I can't host websites. I don't have a million dollars to spend on a building full of servers. Um, realistically, it's not a business I could get into at this point. So I'd have them go out and get a hosting account somewhere. I'd log in and build a website on that account. But the whole time I'm thinking, okay, someone else is providing the hosting and making revenue off of that. Uh, and I thought there's got to be some way to do this. So now I offer hosting. Uh, I don't own a server farm. I, I do a thing called reseller hosting where I rent servers essentially. Uh, but now, you know, I can, I can build someone a website and for one, essentially under one check, I can build it, host it and maintain it. Yeah. If their hours change, for example, because of COVID, they just shoot me an email. I, I don't need to ask them for their password. I just log in on my servers and I change it within an hour. It's updated. Uh, and that's a monthly fee they pay. And it's an ongoing thing. Same with marketing materials, things like business cards and stickers. Those run out. If you have a bar with a little merch shelf and your stickers run out, you're going to call me to do more stickers. Um, and it's not just to set it and forget it. It's not, hey, I made you 100 stickers. I'm never going to hear from you again. And I got one payment. It's a recurring thing. Those run out. Those are consumable. Um, and it, it kind of brings business back into the door. So I've been sort of pivoting toward that, uh, towards some of the recurring revenue for me and recurring value for my clients. Yeah, awesome. And what you're both talking about, which is really interesting, and, and Radley, you, you, you started the conversation, hey, and you kind of tapped, in, tapped it in. Um, it, it's, it's about like finding all of the facets, right? Like starting from the source. It's not about cutting people out, but it's about really figuring out the best way that you can control have have more control over your product right and have control over the diversity of your products so whether it's mm -hmm. the array of what you offer or whether it's all of the steps in the process to provide that product you're talking about i mean you, you have to start with just doing one-to-one -one product right and then you kind of work yep. your thing you kind of creep from there opening up your spectrum and then right. or, or working back towards the source right is that what you guys are saying yep yeah definitely yeah yeah, it's like a, a company we started doing their headshots for. We've now branched into doing all their product photography for their virtual trade show that they're putting on. And then before this, before COVID, we were doing their events for them also. So it, a couple headshots for these people has now turned into a year-round business for us, where we're doing products for them constantly. We're doing stuff for their trade shows. We're doing product product shots for their for their samples for their catalogs and their events, their golf tournaments, their company parties, their corporate holiday events. So it just branches out from just one, from starting at one little thing, it just keeps branching out. And those people know people and those people know people and it's just, it just it kind of steamrolls. Yeah, but it sounds like it just, it has to start from doing like one simple thing, like a picker or a one-to-one -one photography, just one shoot and then doing it really well and then backing it with your not personal warranty, but you as a person as the warranty, right? Like just showing up for them. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, Bradley, or hey, we need something else. Hey, and you're like, hey, cool, we got something else. Let's get this one so it grows from there. So. Exactly, yeah, it kind of helps to get your foot in the door like that. Yeah, 
what what message in this time we've gotten through kind of like the big big challenge which was being cooped up at home and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring but what message would you both have for other local business owners and friends family our local community here in bellingham what, would, what, what message would you like to to pass along to them through this platform network trust your networks build your network grow your network meet people even if it's virtually you go out and shake their hands get to know them virtually if you right now you gotta virtually shake their hands but <laughs> it's just build up that rapport with people so they know you and they know your trust and they, they trust you even if they haven't worked with you yet they feel they, they, you're building this trust them this feeling of confidence with them that when they need your services they know who to call but go out there and join these networking groups like the Bellingham Chamber, the Ferndale Chamber, um, any, any of your like BNI networking groups, the, the, the networking groups of, of like were one of the best things that we've did, they did for my business is years ago on the Bellingham Chamber. Someone's busy. To me, right? <laughs> um, Millie from the chamber came to my, knocked on my first studio door and says, you're gonna join the Chamber of Commerce. And I had no idea why, why I should even do that. And she says, you're gonna do this. You need, you need to do this. And that was one of the best things I did for this. One of the best things I did for my company and myself is join the Chamber of Commerce and, and learned, and I learned to network and they helped me learn to network and they helped me along growing a business in Bellingham. And that networking process was the ground, the foundation for what I got to do in Bellingham because where I came from, we didn't do that. It was, there was a, there was a company in every other corner up here. It's, it's done with a handshake and people know you yeah. and they get to know you and it's everything is with a handshake. So it's, it's a whole different world up here. Yeah. So staying connected, really important. Yeah. 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 Hey, and what about you? What like, yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. And stay connected. It's not, not just a, a one-time thing. It's just, you, you, it's the repetition of talking to these people and, and networking with them. Even if you don't do business with them right now, there will come a, come a time when, either you need business from them or they need business from you or they know somebody that needs this or you know somebody that needs this. So it's keeping those connections available that will help us survive and excel. Absolutely. Yeah. Hayden, what about you? What message would you like to pass along to your fellow entrepreneurs and other, you know, our community here in Bellingham? Yeah, honestly, I was going to kind of say the same thing. Just keep that network up, keep your marketing up. Uh, I've been telling my clients, I'm a little biased because I do marketing work, obviously. But now's the time to get ahead. You know, things are slowing down business-wise. Uh, now's the time to, you know, go to those video breakfasts the chamber is hosting. Um, you know, there are opportunities out there because you never know when one connection can turn into something big. I give an right. example that I, I have a client who, um, he's a stand-up comic I've been a fan of for a long time. And he was doing kind of a unique, he was sort of crowdfunding a comedy tour a few years ago. And I saw it online, thought it was super cool, was totally ready to buy tickets. And I sort of had an idea for his marketing. And I emailed him and I said, hey, I have an idea that I think would help promote these shows. And I, I said, look, I said, for this idea, I can do it. I'd probably charge one to 200 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, and I said, just, I, I said, you buy me, you get me four tickets to your Seattle show and I'll do this for your tour. He wrote back and he goes, that sounds more than fair. It's about the same dollar value on each side. And I said, I'm gonna buy these tickets, but I said, you need this for your tour. Uh, how about we just do a one for one trade? And he goes, yeah, he goes, that sounds more than fair. Uh, tour was super successful and now I'm sort of his go-to guy for a lot of this stuff. I'll get an email from him going, hey, we're doing some sort of virtual comedy show or something like that. We need something done. Uh, and I've now, you know, had a, had a good income from this guy because of one little connection that I made because I wanted to not pay for comedy tickets. <laughs> I love it. That's and awesome. it, that, that's the thing is these things happen. Um, you know, I, I hadn't met the guy until I went to his show. This was all done via email. Um, and it's the same thing now is there's these video meetings, these video breakfasts, um, networking lunches, stuff like that. And keep it up. Keep your marketing up because we are going to get out of this. Things are going to get back to normal. And once we're all back to working 40 plus hours a week, you don't want to go, oh, man, I really could have gotten ahead these last six months. Yeah. It's not a snow day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. you hearing that. So first of all, I wanted to thank you both for joining me today on the Building Billion pivot series and for those of you that watched obviously thank you so much for joining us as well um, so these are two guys that you need to get in contact with for anything design marketing branding photography brand presentation um, so just a quick plug here radleymuellerphotography.com 
You can find all their services. Um, you can get Bradley's direct cell phone number to bug him uh, all hours of the night. He likes being bugged. Uh, but no, BradleyMillerPhotography.com, and, and you can see all the array of different uh, uh, services they provide. So awesome. We work directly with them uh, very much. So, um, And then also, you can find them on Instagram um, and on Facebook, and all the details will be in the, in the comments below and in the, in the description. And then, hey, Lamaster, so LamasterGraphics.com. And you're on Instagram and Facebook as well. I found you on Facebook and yeah. Instagram as well, right? At LaMaster Graphics, yeah. Perfect. So if you're watching this and you want to get more details on what they do or get tips and tricks, reach out to these guys. These are two guys that are, I know, uh, very focused on education. And so I know that um, if you had any questions about either of their fields and branding, um, I am a huge proponent of uh, going head first all the way deep on, uh, on, on branding. So, um, Please let me know if you have questions, and I'm happy to put you in touch with uh, either of these guys in any uh, regard. So thank you to you both for taking the time today. It's sunny out. Let's go get outside. Um, <laughs> go uh, feel free to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Um, follow either of these guys, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate right, the time. Thank you.